Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hi, Calvary. Thanks for starting your week with the word for the day. I'm Pastor Pete, and we are continuing our study in the book of First Peter. Today's topic is about suffering and serving. So let me ask a question. Have you ever been punished when you hadn't done anything wrong? If you can identify with that idea, you're going to understand what Peter is writing in this passage. We're in chapter 2, starting in verse 18. We're going to go through a whole paragraph, so we're going to just take little bits at a time. Okay, so I'm going to start with verse 18. Verse 18 says, Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and the gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing, when mindful of God, one endures sorrows, while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if you do good and suffer for it, you endure. This is a gracious thing in the sight of God. So Peter is writing to slaves and he says, if your master is good, obey them, respect them. And even if your master is evil, obey them and respect them. If your master treats you badly, even though you're doing good, you're supposed to endure that. And that's a gracious thing. So today we're thinking more in terms of employer and employee. Do you have a good employer? Well, respect them. Don't take advantage of their kindness. Do you have a bad employer? An employer that uh, puts you down, an employer that treats you unjustly? still show obedience and respect. Endure, because the Bible calls it a gracious thing. In other words, as you endure that unjust suffering, you are modeling the grace that Jesus has poured out on you. So what does that mean though? Why would we do that? Look at how it continues. Verse 21, for to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. So Jesus is our example. He suffered unjustly. He hadn't done anything wrong. And when he was reviled, he didn't return with threats. When he suffered, he didn't try to get vengeance. Instead, what he did is he entrusted himself to the righteous judge, his father. He trusted his father, that his father would be able to make all of this suffering that he's enduring, would be able to make it all right. So Jesus is our example. So when we endure suffering unjustly, when we have to put up with that boss or that person that's over us in life and they um, treat us wrongly, we can identify with Jesus and we can suffer and endure through that as Jesus being our role model. And then 1 Peter ends this way as he's describing Jesus. Jesus, he himself, bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed For you were straying like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd, the overseer of your souls. So in Jesus, we have this Savior who bore our sins on his body. We have this beautiful phrase that by his wounds, we have been healed. And so the challenge that we have is to suffer whether that's justly or unjustly, and also to be sure and turn away from sin to pursue righteousness because Jesus died and suffered for you. He is your shepherd. He wants to lead you to that righteous path. Calvary, I hope that this passage blesses you today. And if it does, would you like it, share it, or leave a comment below and have a blessed day.